Now, in this particular problem, what I've done is sketch what we're given. And we're told that the tan of the angle theta equals 5 twelfths and the coefficient of friction for this rough plane that B is on is 2 thirds. And we've got to find the acceleration of B then as it moves up the plane from rest. So to start off, what I want to do is first of all put the forces on our particles A and B. So if we take the particle A first of all, it's got a mass of 7 kilograms, so there's going to be a weight, it's going to be a weight acting downwards of 7g newtons. Let's just mark that in then, 7g newtons. There'll be a tension acting upwards, okay, provided by the string here. Let's call it T, T newtons. Now that's the forces for A. Now when we come over to B, what forces can we expect on B? Well, there'll be the weight of B which acts downwards. That's going to be 3g newtons. There'll be the contact force, the normal contact force from this rough plane. That'll be acting perpendicular to the plane. We'll call it R newtons. There'll also be the tension, wanting to pull it up the plane. And that tension we'll mark in here. Now, it is going to be exactly the same tension as we've got over there. And it's worthwhile knowing why that is, because you quite often ask that in problems. Why are the tensions the same? Well, it's because you've got a smooth pulley here. We're told that P is a smooth pulley. Okay, so what else have we got? Well, it's a rough plane and B is moving from rest up the plane. So there's going to be friction acting opposing motion. So friction is going to act in the opposite direction to motion. That's going to be down the plane. And because it's moving up the plane, friction must have reached a maximum. In other words, it's equal to mu r. And we're told that mu is two thirds. So we know that this force here, mu r, is going to be two thirds of r. And that'd be measured in newtons. Okay, so we've got that part done. I'd also want to mark in this angle here. Whenever I'm doing work on planes, I'd always mark in a dotted line like that and mark in the angle theta in this case in there. That's going to be useful when it comes to splitting the weight into components, as you'll see later when we do resolving. The diagram's still not complete because B moves from rest and starts to speed up. It accelerates as it goes up the plane. And it's this acceleration that we've got to find. So I'm going to mark in an acceleration arrow parallel to the plane. That'd be a double arrow, something like that, and we'll call it A. A meters per second per second, okay? Now, because the string is inextensible, it doesn't stretch, as soon as this particle B moves, A will move at exactly the same rate. So it too is going to have an acceleration. It'll be a downward acceleration, but it'll be equal to this value here. So we might as well say that this too is A, A meters per second per second. Okay, so I've got the accelerations marked in. I don't think there's anything else that I really need to consider now at this point. So it takes quite a while then just to set up the diagram. So don't get impatient, just go with that, okay? Now, in order to find this acceleration A, what I'm going to need to do is start to try and work out what some of these other forces acting on B are going to be, the T and the R. So in order to do that, I'm going to start with this particle here, A. So we're going to consider particle A. So we'll just put a little subtitle there. It helps the reader know where we're going, okay? So if we consider particle A, what we're going to do is resolve downwards. We're going to look at Newton's equation of motion, that's force equals mass times acceleration for particle A. 
So what is the resultant force pushing this particle A downwards? Well, we've got all of 7G acting downwards, and we've got minus T. It acts in the opposite sense to that direction. So that is the overall force acting on A, and that is equal to the mass times the acceleration. The mass is 7 kilograms, and the acceleration is A. Now what we need to do is to rearrange this so that we make T the subject. So we can add T to both sides and subtract 7A. So therefore we get T equals 7G minus 7A. Okay, so we'll just put that on hold. Let's call that, say, equation 1. Now that we're done with particle A, we now move over to particle B. So let's just uh, mark that in there as a subtitle that we're now going to consider particle B. And what we need to do, first of all, is establish what R is. And the way to do that is to look at resolving perpendicular to the plane. So if we resolve perpendicular to the plane, and we'll have away from the plane as being positive, then we've got all of R acting away from the plane in the positive sense. So that's going to be R. As for the T and the frictional force two-thirds R, these two forces are perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving in. And perpendicular forces have no effect. So we can ignore the T and the frictional force two-thirds R. But as for this force, the weight, because this is acting at an angle to the direction that we're resolving in, it's not perpendicular, then we have to split this into two components. One will be into the plane and one will be down the plane. And we should know that the one into the plane, which contains the angle, will be using cos theta. It will be 3g cos theta. And it acts in the opposite sense to the direction that we've got as positive. So that would be minus 3g cos theta. If you're unsure about resolving forces, just look in on one of my tutorials on splitting a force into components, and you'll see why we use cos theta. Okay, so we've got that one, minus 3g cos theta. The other component would end up going down the plane, and it would be perpendicular to the direction we're resolving, so we can ignore it. So this is the resultant force acting on B, and this resultant force has to be equal to zero because it isn't moving or accelerating relative to the plane in the perpendicular sense. So from this, we can work out what R is. Therefore, R is going to equal 3G cos theta if we add it to both sides. Now, when it comes to working out what cos theta is, we don't have to actually physically work out what theta is from here by doing the inverse tan of 5 to L. So there's nothing to stop you. But this is generally designed for you to work with a triangle. As I've mentioned in previous tutorials, when you get things like this, just sketch your triangle, put theta here. This is a ratio of sides. And for tangent, this is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite to theta is 5 and the adjacent is the 12. So by Pythagoras' theorem, you can work out what the hypotenuse is by doing the square of 5 squared plus 12 squared and then square rooting it. And that'd be the square root of 169, which is 13. And you should know this triangle. It's often referred to as the 5, 12, 13 triangle. Okay, so when it comes to doing cos theta, all we need to do is adjacent over hypotenuse, 12 over 13. So R equals 3G cos theta or 3G multiplied by 12 over 13. And if you work this out in terms, say, of G, you've got 3 times 12, which is 36, and then you've got 36G over 13. Okay, so let's just put that as equaling 36g over 13. And that would be measured in newtons. So we've got what r is. 
Now what we can do is, we're still considering B, but we can look at the motion up the plane. We can resolve up the plane and now think about the acceleration using F equals MA. So let's just border this off here, okay, so we don't run into it. I'm going to move over to here now. We'll carry on then and work from B and we'll resolve up the plane. Always resolve in the direction of motion. So when we look at the forces acting up the plane, we've got all of T acting up the plane. So we've got T there. We've got minus two thirds R. The friction acts in the opposite sense to this. So that'd be minus two thirds. Now we've already worked out what R is. It's over here, 36 G over 13. So we might as well pop that in there as well. 36 G over 13. All right. And what else have we got? Well, R is perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving in, so that has no effect. But the 3G Newtons is inclined at an angle other than 90 degrees to the direction we're resolving, so we need to think of the components of 3G Newtons. One will be into the plane. That will have no effect because it will be perpendicular to this direction. But one will be acting down the plane. And this is the one that excludes the angle theta, so the component down the plane will be 3g sine theta. And it acts in the opposite sense, so it'll be minus 3g sine theta. So they're all the forces acting on the particle in the direction up the plane. And because it's not in equilibrium relative to the plane in this direction, it's accelerating up here. This force, this resultant force here, is equal to mass times acceleration. And the mass we know is 3 kilograms, so that's 3 times acceleration A, which is what we're trying to find. So all we need to do is substitute our value for T from 1 up here into here. We've got it in terms of A. Rearrange the equation and solve for A. So what I'm going to do is say sub 1 into the above. Okay, and if we do that for the T here, we've got 7G minus 7A. So therefore, we have 7G minus 7A. We should be able to clean this term up here in terms of G. You do a bit of cancelling. Look, 3 cancels into that 36 12 times and we end up with 2 times 12 24 g over 13 so that'd be minus 24 g over 13. For this one we've got minus 3 g times sine theta. Sine theta is going to be equal to opposite over hypotenuse 5 over 13. So I could multiply that with 5 over 13 and get 3 times 5 is 15. 15g 15 over 13 minus 15g over 13. And that equals 3a. Now as you can see I'm running out of room here and I don't really want to scroll on. So I'm going to leave it to you. You're going to need to multiply through by 13. And if we do that, okay, we could actually just squeeze it in, I feel, maybe. Let's just go 7, we're going to do 7 times 13. That's going to give us 91G. 91G. We've got minus 7A times 13. That's going to be minus 91A. Then we've got minus 24G. Minus another 15G. And that's going to equal 3 13s, which is going to be 39A. So let's just come down here, okay? Not ideal, but uh, it will save us from scrolling on. We can then add 91A to the 39A. That's going to give us 130A. Group the Gs together, 91G minus 24G minus 15G. And that's going to give us 52G. So if we come down here, we therefore have 130A equals 52g. And it's a simple case of dividing both sides by 130, cancelling it down, and you'll end up with a equaling two-fifths 
G. Or you could take G as 9.8 and work it out as a decimal, but I'm going to give it as an exact value. And that'd be measured in meters per second per second. So there you go. A bit cramped, but I hope you can uh, understand why I've uh, wanted to keep it on one uh, particular screen. Okay, so you can see what's uh, going on. Okay, quite a long question, worth 10 marks, okay? But uh, as I say, I hope you've uh, been able to follow what I've been doing.